14. 14. A lot. Do you think we'd make it to 14? <laughs> I'm still not sure why we're at 14. <laughs> so I figured the top, so the topic, we don't really have a topic, but the topic is the energy this week has been. So we are recording this the wait second week of December. Yeah, whenever it would publish. So it well, won't publish 13th, next 13th week. It'll publish next week. So we're probably two weeks out from the publication of this one. Right. And energy has been so wonky, at least for us. But I don't think it's just for us because it seems like this is a a global phenomenon. Yeah. A trying week. A trying week. Yeah. Right. And what I'm noticing energetically. The frequency is very jittery, like, like everything, right? Like that, that things come up to the surface and hit you really deep, really fast. Yeah, yeah, is is right there. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot to really push people's buttons, ourselves included. No, I. But so we'll talk about our buttons. But I think this is. I think this is a global phenomenon. And and yes, everybody will have good days and bad days, but, I, and I'm not saying these days are bad, it's just the amount of retrospect or self-evaluation, whether you want it or not, is coming your way. It's here. It's here. And then this week seems to be a whole, a whole, like, an influx of it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if this, even if, I mean, we had several... I mean, it's not that they were bad. They were just, they were tedious. But it's like, I don't know why they would have affected us the way that they did. They were incredibly draining beyond anything it should have been. No, they affected us because it hit, it hit at the core of our unprocessed unprocessed pain yeah, and but trauma. If, if, but if that had happened three weeks ago, you think it would have been the same? I do. Maybe. I do. I think, well, I think it hits you whenever you're ready to face whatever is at the surface, right? Like whatever's right there bouncing up that, and maybe it has been bouncing for a while, but you, you know, this, whatever, what happened to you would hit you exactly when you're ready for it or when you're ready, you're ready to address it. Mm. So, I mean, it, you know, like on the, on the, Global timing, it is um, is exactly what it needs to be. So three weeks ago, meaning it would have needed to be three weeks ago. Yeah, and so the things that that happened to us, and we don't necessarily need to address the things that happened, but and yeah, they were not bad, but there were just a lot of these very little things. And with me, they hit at at the core. Uh, one, it's nonsense, right? It's nonsense. And and so whenever I'm faced with what I perceive as nonsense, but at the same time, I can't change the situation. I have to like bear through it or like go through it, right? So even if I can start to attempt to step back and look at it from above as opposed to swimming out deep in it, I am, it is, it is it becomes more difficult because it brings up my intolerance for nonsense. So I, you know, I almost have like a short, a short trigger when it comes to like, wait, this is completely ridiculous. There's zero logic here. Yes. That's, that's what hit me was that it's like, it feels like you're arguing with a, with a brick wall and, it, and, yeah. and I'm like, but look, the, the papers say this. And the person on the phone's like, well, sorry, that's not what it says in the system. And it's like, but but your system's wrong. And, right. you know, in her defense, what could she possibly do about it? No, I get it, that. This is not on the people it's that we that dealt person. with. So what, what it comes down to with me, what it hits is whenever something is, how about this? At least I perceive it being as clearly wrong. Like what this person is saying is clearly wrong yes. or what this person is trying to spin as truth is clearly a lie. Yes. Like, so those situations where it's like this, there's this just blatant. And I don't know that it's, it's, you know, 
malicious. Ma- male- malicious. It may just, I don't know if it's if it's ignorance or if it's, I don't know. No, I'm talking and about it, all the incidents, multiple incidents where there's just lying, right? Okay, yeah. Some people are uh, oh, just yeah. lying. Yeah. Right? So, bo- but both of those situations, whether it's malicious or this is just the type of human being that we're dealing with, what it comes down to is it hits me at that, like, this is complete crap. And then, but at the same time, because I have to deal with it and I have to, like, work through it. And then, of course, at the same time, I'm trying to stay conscious of what I'm feeling. I'm recognizing what it brings up is that feeling of helplessness. Like, what the heck? Like, really, like, am I am I being pranked here type of a thing? But yeah. but yet I have to go through it with this because this yeah. is my truth as I'm facing right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's similar to me because it's like I, you know, you and I operate on on a certain level. We are, you know, for the most part, you know, good, honest people. And we don't lie and we don't cheat and we don't steal and all for that. The most, for the most part, like, <laughs> we lie, we cheat and steal, but for the most part. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> but when when we are dealing with with someone who malicious or not is saying something that isn't true and we're trying we're like but but it says this or you know they're 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 saying that, that someone broke this when clearly that didn't happen and uh it's it's like wait a minute you're you're not playing fair at life yeah, but there's that's people who just like. don't play fair. I know there's people who don't play fair. And but that's you, and not, I, you and I don't know how to deal with we that. We don't know how to deal with that. Because it's like, oh, yeah, if you can lie and cheat and steal, you can get ahead. Ahead, you know, in whatever dimension that happens to be. Well, to, to them, they think they're to getting them, yeah. ahead. I can. They can get this for free or they can, you know, not pay this or no, they, this, whatever it is. This particular individual did say, oh, you know what? I, I'm always trying to see if I can squeeze a penny to stay my way here or there. Meaning like, this is just the way they right. operate. And everybody wants to save as much and pay as little. I get that. Everybody does. I mean, we are in the same position. Yes. Every, every human, if they don't have to pay for something, they don't want to pay for something. That is, that is probably universal. But, you know, it's like, what are you willing to do in order to do that? Are you willing to lie? Are you willing to steal in order to do that? It's like, I'm, I'm not. So it's, it's difficult. For the most part. For the most part, sure. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to you know, we, we don't have to deal with that situation very often. Well, but when we do, it's like, oh, I have, am I am I playing the wrong game? Am I how do I how do I how do I interact with this situation? Because it's like I'm not going to go lying and and stealing in order to I hate to say stoop down to that level in order to you know to to level the playing field because that's not the right thing to do either. At the same time, I don't want to be taken advantage of and you know pay for something that wasn't buying to begin with what's what what do you what does one do i mean what you know from the larger standpoint one right if if you're down in that nitty-gritty the only thing you can see is the small you experiencing them from the small standpoint yeah and so we have fallen into that this week how about this it has been challenging to climb out of that and every time i spend time meditating and and trying to process and trying to let go, it's been difficult to to then then like the next thing comes right up. It seems like the next thing crawls right in. Right. Like it's a, a completely different thing. Of, yeah, it's it's completely like different. Just, but it, just it's, one after it's, another it's, after it's, another. It but it's hitting, hitting the same, the same yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, from from the from the right versus wrong standpoint is awareness into what this is doing to you. Yeah. Right. That that has been difficult to just to like, oh, oh, look, this is happening. It is not about this person and it's not about this person. It's not even about this thing. It's not even that thing. It's just step back and look what it's doing to you. But with you and I this week, we had hard time stepping back. Did have a hard time stepping back. And then looking at it from like a larger, larger for what it is. Wait, this is if life is a grand experience and it's a grand lesson in self. Quite literally, just in self. What is the lesson in self? Am I learning here? Right, and yeah. it's been difficult to go there because, like, 
you know, you try to go up and try to look for things from that standpoint. But then immediately you and I sink down, go, well, no, but they're wrong. Right. And, and so like, and we're back in the ditches. Right. Trenching our way through shit. It's right, wrong, duality. Right, good, wrong. Good, good, bad, right, they're wrong. Bad, we're right. We're judging. You feel hopeless because they're wrong and you're right. And so you are in the duality, right. in the trenches. You're you're not even on the ground. You're in the trenches. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 difficult not to feel almost high and mighty. It's like, but I'm right. But you're wrong. How, why can't you see that? And maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe they do see that. And it's like, I don't care. I don't want to, I, I still, right, right or wrong, I don't want it to go that way. So I will pretend or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, but right. But, but all that is kind of beside the point. It's almost irrelevant. And what's maybe a little bit more relevant here is I am for sure having hard time stepping back from it and seeing it from the larger standpoint of, wait, if this is a life lesson, if this is something I'm supposed to take out of it, am I supposed to have compassion here for this being who this is the way they live? If I'm, Am I supposed to have compassion for myself to realize, oh, look, it's hitting all the little points of me as the broken self. And, you know, and, and instead of like allowing myself to feel that I'm trying to fight it, because that's what it is, right? It is hitting those points of vulnerability that hurt. Yeah. And instead of allowing yourself to just sit there in pain and hurt. You want to fight it. You want to fight it. And then therefore logic and argument and right versus wrong and duality comes in. As opposed to feeling it at the core. And with me, like I'm feeling it. It's like down there in my sacrum. It's yeah. it's that like, well, I just feel wounded. I just, this makes me feel wounded. Yeah. I, I go into like a psychoanalyze mode. And I'm like, well, you know, Lo like to logic it out. Yeah, I'm like, well, this this person is doing this because da 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 da, you know, which you know may very well be true, but it is also beside the point. Yeah, but right, right, but it, with me, I didn't. I can say this is why the person's doing it, but at the same time, I'm also having a hard time drawing compassion to that person as a human being. Right. It's it's one thing to you know. It, it's one thing if that happens out there, but it's a different thing when it's happening when you are at the receiving end of something like that. Well, but it, but it, that's that's where the work is. Yeah. Is that's where you see the truth it, of it, your own it, development. It feels personal, right? There, there is actual potential, you know, money or time on well, the line. It, it, it's sometimes not, is it actually money and is it time or is it about righteousness? Maybe both. I don't know. Like to me, right. You know, money is money, but like money is tied in into fairness. fairness so yeah. my money, money coming and money going itself is not what money is. In this case, the money and keeping of the money versus losing the money represents fairness. Right. Money is, I mean, a lot of people say that money is the way that our society keeps score. Yeah. Right. right? <laughs> Which, you know, is awful. An awful way to look at it. Because then the rich people are winning, the poor people are losing, and you know, losing. And if somebody screws you over over money, yeah, then guess they're what? Winning. The, so they're the yeah, they won and you lost. You know, the the employer employee relationship is is all you know. They're clearly winning because they have the money that they're giving to you. It that is a terrible way to look at the world. Yeah, we um, it, this is on a side note, but like we did a meditation with money. Uh, and then there's like a lot of exercises that where you sit down and you identify what money means to you, right? And, and it was extremely helpful because like I've real, realized that the money itself is not the money. The money has all these subsets of definitions behind yeah. it. Like safety, security, that's what it is for me. Mm. In this case, what we're dealing with this week is fairness. Yeah. But also still safety and security. Right. For and maybe maybe even still now for for a lot of my life money and and time were interchangeable and you know when i'm a you know young you know it's they're interchangeable at whatever the minimum wage happens to be mm. and now you know it it's a, it's a bit different but um i almost look at money as a way to buy time back you know yeah but that's probably still a con it's, construct yeah, you it know? is you know it's a complete construct but you know but that's how i've i've looked at it 
and probably still do to some degree is is it's you know once once there's enough to you know you're not you know your your shelter your food your basic needs are taken care of any extra money buys time i don't i don't have to go do this because i can you know i i i can i not necessarily even pay someone else to do it but i i have money that is like a a buffer sort of or it will it allows flexibility for a, a vacation or a or a day off or whatever yeah but you realize that 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 builds a very limiting construct right if, if, if you look you, at your bank account that's how that's how much time you have that's no that's how free you are there you go yeah how many zeros you got that's how free you are which is not true which is not true right it's people who have zero money are more free than right. most people are right yeah but but if that is the definition at which you look at money then by default that's the only thing that can exist in your life your freedom is tied to this construct of how you feel any one day about money right when it's it isn't freedom it's you know i guess really it's not freedom it's ability to do things that cost money right whether that's a but i the things that you want i mean there's some things you want to do that cost money but majority of the things that make you happy don't actually cost money not much right not not much past the what is it i think seventy five thousand dollars for a family yeah i think that they calculated that, that after seventy five thousand dollars is of income, a family income, you're, you're, you're pretty much... You start plateauing on your happiness. It, and actually, you know, well, no, happiness, that, you, that is pretty much all you need to have all your needs met. And then, yeah, maybe maybe human definition of happy. Right. And, and, go, and, and that's it. Going from 50 to 75 makes a difference, but going from 75 to 85, not as much. Yeah, or even to 100. Yeah. Like that extra $25,000 just... And dot, sick. dot, dot, you know, in the middle of, I don't know, Oklahoma might be different than in San Francisco. Yeah. But, well, and I don't know when that study was done. Right. Too. You know, inflation has been going really high too. But there you go. There's the concept too, right? Where like everybody's saying, oh, everybody, all the all the prices just keep on going up. Right. There's a construct there, right? Meaning what? Oh, I have less. I have less because everything costs more. Right. This, oh, yeah. This, and, this dollar is literally worth less than it was yesterday. Yeah. Which, 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 you know, if the prices are going up in the dollar, right? But we're living in this construct. Right. And then everything is measured against it. Right. And it's, I mean, and that's not even going into the fact that all this money is, you know. Paper. Paper, magic money that it was only, only worth anything because you and I and everybody else agrees it's worth anything. Yeah. It's not even, it's not even gold, which is, you know, only one less step removed. That's, well, no, a, that's but, a whole different. But, but everything is a, <laughs> that's a whole different episode. Yeah, everything is a construct, though, right? Right. We all disagree that. No, but ev everything. We all agree we stop at red lights. We all agree the money's worth something. Yeah. Right. And so there's these there's rudimentary construct that everybody lives by and believes in, and like, but but fairness, which is what I'm struggling with this mm -hmm. week, fairness is personalized. And so, therefore, unlike money, where we all agree the dollar is a dollar and dollar buys nothing at the dollar store now. <laughs> yeah, right? We went to the dollar store. Everything's a dollar twenty-five. We're I like, know, wait, I don't know when that happened. We have the dollar something, store in a Something long time. for $5. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? I remember the good old days when everything was $1. There was still tax on that, but. Well, no, when, when yeah, I moved. did not, there were no price tags because everything was a dollar. No, when I, when we moved here in 95. We used to go to Dollar General a lot. Mm -hmm. And the Dollar General, this was 95, already had things that are not a dollar, even though it's called Dollar General. Yeah. And so I was slightly confused being uh, non-English one, speaker. One would be confused. Uh, but when the Dollar Tree came about, it was a dollar. Like is, I was, is that where we went? Dollar yeah, tree? Dollar Tree. Because okay. th that seems to be the only dollar store we have at, at, in our city these days like more so, more yeah. of them than anything else there's not that many dollar generals but yeah we went to dollar tree and so but we haven't been there for at least six months maybe a year maybe two. Oh, longer than that longer than that i would say three or four years oh yeah i don't know so i don't know when they moved to dollar 25 as their currency now but we we get we get 
cat pee mats there. Yeah. And they were a dollar, which but for a dollar twenty five, they're still worth it. Yeah. Cat pee mats. Well, they're they're just floor mats, but they're like heavy duty. Yeah. But dollar twenty five. And you don't feel so bad throwing them away yeah, at a dollar twenty five. Yeah. Because yeah. cats come out of the litter box and they're kind of like grit, have a little grip to them. Yeah. Hey, I, I am advertising dollar 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 twenty five cat grip mats. For the, all of those cat people. <laughs> for the cat people. <laughs> yeah, but for the price, right? If you were yeah. to buy even that, um, even those like, those like cat mats that you would get at the any pet store, or even Target, they're like seven or eight bucks and yeah. you feel bad throwing it away. Yeah. And for dollar twenty five, you know, and we had those for a long time. Yeah, those for years. Yeah. Right? I, although when I was throwing them away, I did see like all the pee, oh. pee stains and I'm like, oh, this is, these are past due. We get sidetracked again. No, but the constructs, right? Yeah. That's, I think, what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about cat, cat pee. Cat pee. <laughs> we deal with a lot of cat pee. A lot. <laughs> Only two cats. We, these days. Yeah, we used to have six and a half. Yeah. No, it's just two. Sleeping, because it's oh. cold outside. Yeah, no, and so, so the fairness does not, is not, a universally applied filter, right? Right. Because two different people can have opposing views, and both of them think that it's fair to go their own way. Yeah, right. And but in the long run, it is completely irrelevant because the idea of fairness actually ties in into your personal pain body, right? The fact that you think something is fair or not, and then the second that fairness gets tipped to the unfair, it's hit some portion of your of your trapped energy. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that trapped energy is just simply being poked at, meaning like, oh, look, I'm still here and you still have not spent time addressing me or, you know, letting, letting go. Yeah. And so I think that's where we spend a lot of our time this week. It's just like that fairness, at least for me, I, I I'm speaking for myself. No, I mean, it's, just, it's, that's a good way to, to summarize it is, is fairness. Cause it, um, I, I was looking at it like maybe a step above or below of like, you know, <laughs> right. It's not even right versus wrong. It's that not like morally right versus wrong. It's more like with, with the, with the phone call, it's more like it, this was clearly the, the papers say this and the person saying, no, it's no, it's that. And it's like, it's it, trapped. It, trap. It's, it's so, Something like that frustrates me to no end. It's not because it's not even a moral debate. It's a factual debate. Yeah. And I'm like, but the paper says this. And she's like, well, the system says that. Yeah. And in, in that case, I think basically what was happening is the system is just coded wrong. It's right. Yeah. And so this and person is just a customer support. For a year or two and yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. But in that but case, you where know, does what, that leave me? You know what it was? I realized it was strapped. Because that yeah. that night when I went to bed and I was trying to like see, wait. What what is it? What is it that is stirring at? And at first, I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just go to the what I usually go to is helplessness, right? And and so I was trying to let go of helplessness, and I spent some time letting go of this helplessness thought process or field. And then later, I went, no, it's more than that. It's trapped. It's deeper than helplessness. Yeah. It's I'm helpless because I am trapped. Yeah, I don't know if trapped is the, is the one word I would use for myself, but. But it's it's probably close. I mean, it it is helpless. It is trapped to some degree. But it's like, it's like I almost see myself being caged up in the cage, like almost like wrongfully accused. Right when you feel like if you are wrongfully accused of yeah. doing something wrong, and then you're imprisoned, meaning you're trapped in this cage. And then there's nothing you can do to get out with the cages, probably my mind, right? But you have done nothing wrong. Like, in fact, you might be in the right, but, but you're, but because yeah. of the control and the powers above or whatever the circumstances are, you're, this is your truth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the phone call one, it wasn't even a right, wrong, moral thing. That's what makes it interesting to me is that one. That one was so frustrating because it wasn't, you know, because I understand that people can have different views on what is right and what is wrong. 
And this was not. This was a... Here's what the numbers say. Oh, no, they say that. And and then we're arguing over facts. And I'm like, arguing over facts seems weird because aren't fact facts, like, by definition? Right. And so you've got, you've just got... Do you not feel trapped when that just, happens? It's... I do, but trap doesn't feel like the right word. If, there's a different word that I'm going to have to come up with. I, I mean, like, to me, you can you can pull up synonyms for trapped and see if, if one of them hits. Like, to me, it's almost like, yeah, like arguing with a wall, right? Yeah, arguing with But the except wall. the wall has all the control. There's that in it, too, is that, yes, right. you're arguing with a wall, but the wall has the ability to to say yes or no. Synonym. Confined, cut off, caught, cornered, pinned down, corner, uh, hemmed in, shut in, hedged in, imprisoned, held captive. Eh. Cheated, maybe. Wait, empath Fooled. at an empath? Uh, imp- imp- was uh, not empath. Uh, at an impasse, where you're impasse. at an impasse with someone. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that, that, yeah, but that's. But that's like not. That's not it. it emotionally, felt like, you know, you're you're <laughs> you're almost having a debate with a child. This person was not a child, but like a child who is stubborn and who's just going to go, "No, the sky is blue," or "No, the sky is red." You're like, "No, but it's it's blue. Just look." And you're like, "Nope, it's red." Do you remember the "Don't Look Up" movie? Mm-hmm. That is the same feeling. To yeah, me. that is that is the same because it's like. Oh my gosh, you people. Just <laughs> just just look. Just look. It's like what Yeah. Yeah, the don't look up. It was that feeling. And that isn't exactly trapped to me. I can see how it could how it could be, but it's not. Trapped's not the right word. It's 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 frustrated, but it's much more than frustrated. Well, like in this case, it's with something that is defined by numbers. Like, yeah, ju- it, just like a comment, like with, tra- with don't look up, I don't know, so maybe we should sum it up. Oh, it, don't like, look, the, the plot of has, don't look up is, yeah. there's a comet coming to Earth and the scientists are like, there's a comet coming to Earth, we need to do something. Yeah. And then people are like, denying it. No, it's not. No, there's not. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And the scientists are like, no, 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 this is a really big deal. Everyone's going to die if we don't do something. Yeah, I think it's it's a Netflix film. And I think yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence are the main two stars. And yeah, and, yeah, and the don't, don't look up is because like you quite literally just look up and you see the comet. And there's people like on the streets with sign like, there's no comet. Yeah. Uh, it, it was I, just, I think it was a uh, uh, a statement to the uh, COVID and, and vaccines and like stuff like that. That's what I think it was meant to be. I don't know what, what it's meant to be. In this case, I guess it applies to us because that's how we felt right. with this phone call. It's like, just look these numbers up. Well, you know, Google says it. No, just search it up and go look it up for real and you will see. Okay. No, but there's no okay. Yeah, but there's no okay. Yeah, in this case, it's like, I'm sorry, this is, I'm looking at a system that I have to apply for because I am employee that looks at the system and the system says this. And yeah. so it's a brick wall. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that. I understand that there's no magic button that will give me what I want. I understand that. But where does that leave me? I'm stuck. I'm, st- I'm stuck where I don't want to be because of this system, even though I know that that's not where I am supposed to be. Yeah. So not it's a, trapped? It's a, it's a weird... Stuck is better than trapped to me. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the difference? I don't know. I mean, right? They're like almost synonyms, but... Well, no. I mean, to you, stuck, right? But that means that that energy is held with the signature of that word yeah. more so. Stuck's better. I don't know if stuck's the best word, but it's better than trapped to me. Yeah, for me, trap. Tra- um, trap. I mean, tra- to me, trapped almost feels like enclosed, and it doesn't feel enclosed. It feels like on this issue, I just can't move. I know, which you know, 
almost means exactly the same thing, but it, it to me, stuck. Stuck's a better one. Because I'm, I'm stuck where I, not only where I don't want to be, where I genuinely believe that I am not supposed to be. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here and I don't have a, a you know, a, a, a sack of cash on the ground. Okay, I'm stuck where I don't want to be. Okay, well, but I don't believe that, you know, that there is supposed to be. Well, maybe that's a different issue. But, you know, I don't believe that, like, I am entitled to have someone drop off that sack. Okay, this is not going the way I want it to go. Right, in this case, it's I'm stuck where I don't want to be, and I believe I can prove that I'm not supposed to be here with numbers, with hard and fast numbers. There's no debate. There's no argument. It's like, just look. Here's what it says. Is it not injustice? There is, there is some injustice there too, right? right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it feels like, you know, you're dealing with incompetence. And it's, this person may, may not be, but I think, you know, she's just at the, at the mercy of the system. And if there's no button to do it, there's no button to do it. Okay. Yeah. When when we when we first moved to the United States, right, and so I'm I'm 13, and my I learned language quicker than my parents, so this is just like for reference back. But anytime, like you know, we would get a bill or like the you know medical bills are the worst. They make no sense, and that's the one industry where you don't know what you're going to pay before you go in. Yeah, and so so all awful. all the household negotiations or or even like resolutions were placed on me to begin with or well, maybe to begin with the, like the aunts and uncles helped out a bit but then sooner or later after I became fluent enough then it was on me right and I felt this terrible pressure you know this is let's say I'm 14 or 15 to like get it right get it right but at the same time of like I'm supposed to know this and 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 with me I'm like wait Right, because in my in my case, I'm like, I don't know what I don't know. Right. One, I'm in the foreign country. I don't know how things work. Two, I'm a child. And but but like, without making excuses, right? I I right now right now I can look back on my 13 year old and 14 year old and go, okay, well, guess what? Our 16 year old does not know how things work, and he is, you know. American born, American citizen, and right. Th so that that was not necessary and is not expected of any 13 or 14 year old. But because it was expected of me and I didn't even know how things worked, right? right. And my parents didn't have like a background to go, oh, okay, well, when this happened, this is what you do, right? I'm just on my own. This is before Google. Like there's yeah. no Google. Yeah. So you know, I almost felt like I was at the mercy of whoever was on the other line of the phone. Because this is I, I before like, chats. I feel like that a lot. Before Google. Whenever, whenever there's, phone calls. there's any sort of, you know, you, you're calling up and you want something. You want to change your, your, what, your policy or you want money back or you want this or that, you know, and you, right or wrong, you, you, it's a mistake, it's a whatever it does feel like you were just at the mercy of this person who, you know, maybe having a good day, maybe having a bad day, maybe, maybe, maybe a robot <laughs> these days. Who knows? Yeah. Most of them are just robots. And honestly, oh, I know. Um, what was it? We got, we got a gift on, on Amazon and it, uh, was an a, uh, a, a food item and it came in this tin and it was all banged up and we're like, okay, well, it was, Get a new one. Oh, sorry, this is not replaced. Not not returnable. Okay, I understand food things might not be returnable to Amazon. That kind of makes sense. But like, how do I? But I I still want one that isn't broken, and I don't really feel like I should have to buy a second one, right? I don't want this one that's broken. I want. I just want. I just want what I ordered. Is that another one of like like right versus wrong? Is that where it's sitting? Right, but the robot. After talking to the robot for a minute, it was like, okay, another one's on its way. I'm like, okay, well, you know, that worked out well. But sometimes- Are you it, like on the edge? Like, I, does that I, place you on the edge? It of does. Like, this it, is, it, is, it is unnerving in, to me. I'm in the right, and this is just I'm a fair right thing to do. I'm in the right, and I'm at the mercy of, of someone else. 
human or not, to, to you know, resolve the situation. Yeah, but realize, realize that the feeling that you have, even though you're talking about money, has nothing to do with money. Well, it yeah, is completely it, a pain body yeah, related no, it thing. It isn't always money. It is, you know, but it's, yes. But even though we're, t- we're ostensibly talking about replacing a $15 item that, you know, it's not about the $15. It's about the right thing. It just comes down to the right thing. And the right thing hits the pain body that is not processed. I was wrong at some point in my life. And this just hits that. This hits me being wrong. like Wrong or wronged? Wronged. Wronged, right? And so I'm, I was unequivocally right. I was right in every way. And yet. And yet. The powers to be, right? You, you push right. that out onto the third party. We're responsible for basically deeming me wrong, condemning me into wrongness. Right. Even though I was right. By and then you everyone's hit, standard. And then you, there's, there are some consequences. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's. Well, you, but guess what? Jail time. Who yeah, knows? It there's some, some sort the of consequences. The consequences are almost irrelevant, but the trapped energy is there. You are in the right third party, outside third party, deems you to be wrong. And then you're, you're in the wrong and then facing something. In, right. in this case, you know, with, with the food item, 50, loss of $15, but it was not about the $15. No, it, it was the right versus wrong. Yeah, right. The phone call was also right versus wrong. Like mm-hmm. here, here are the numbers. Here are the numbers. What are we talking about? Right. Yeah. And it's like you're just arguing with the wall. You're like, what? What? Right. Like you almost want to scream. Like right. it makes me want to scream. It, it because does. It, it. It is so. But that's trapped fru- energy. It is frustrating. It's trapped way energy. Out of line with how frustrating it should be. Yeah, it's trapped energy. Right. And then I thought. And I brought this up to you because we were we were we've been watching uh, Foundation, the second season of it, and which is on Apple TV. Um, and I realized, wait, so found, we watched Foundation, and there was something else. Oh, we listened to the interview with the biblical scholar. Oh yeah, yeah. On, on Gaia. And so I don't, you know, I brought this up to you, but maybe this is a good time to just bring it up, and we can discuss. That feeling of being trapped or stuck at the mercy of something bigger than you. Makes you feel small. One, it makes you feel small. But two, it makes you feel powerless. It does. And so the amount of charge that I have with that, I think, is bigger than this lifetime or any other lifetime. And I think it's systemically inherited in us, in us as human beings in a suppressed memory of our origin. It is so much, it feels so much bigger than it has any right to be. It feels just out of proportion with reality. With reality, you know, okay, well, we're going to eat that thing anyway. And if we have to, buy another one, so be it, in order to get, you know, a presentable one to give us a gift. Okay, because we're going to, we would use it anyway. Yeah. So it isn't even, right, oh, you know, maybe we wouldn't have bought it right now, but that doesn't really matter. We would have, you know, okay, now we have, now we have some extra. But it is like, oh, but this isn't, this isn't the right thing. And it's, it, it's and, so big. And then it's like, I, I personally get this little, this uncomfortable thing. I'm like, oh, n- now I'm going to have to go deal with this. And it isn't the dealing with it. It's the, and it might not work out the way I want. And I am like, I don't want that responsibility of, of, of doing that. This is, a, this is like a separate type of, type of issue just for me. Avoidance? Well, I don't want the responsibility of having to fix this. Because if it doesn't get fixed, then it's my fault. Is it really my fault? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, you know, nobody would be able to, you know, argue the way past this particular brick wall, whatever well, it is. I think with you, you have a pain body with me judging you for not doing things right. I mean, yes, but is it, it, is but it, it re- is, directly related to me or is it just before you. me? It's just, it's in general. Okay. So I just echo that 
Yeah. For you. I mean, yeah, it's so it's not it's not just you. It's I mean, it, it might fall on you right now, but it 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 predates you. Yeah. But it's, you know, I I I've noticed myself having a resistance to you know, any sort of Cuz it's almost confrontation to you. Like you it look is, at it as confrontation. Right, and I'm like, you know, how how mild of a confrontation can you can it possibly be when you're you know robot. typing into your phone <laughs> to a robot right Are you, yeah. i'm literally arguing with a robot literally well you're not even arguing I'm in not this even case arguing. but I'm you just, are afraid you're gonna have to argue I'm, yeah i catastrophize where it's fear. gonna go and the outcome there's a and fear and it makes of... me very anxious and i don't like it and anymore i try to go, embrace that and go oh look this is practice at this yeah uh, is the is the is the fear like I'm gonna get it wrong and I'm gonna be in that place where I'm being fucked over? Is that it? Are you are you afraid of having to argue? Or are you afraid of not getting it right and then being in that stuck trapped place of being powerless? It's a combination of I'm not. It's not going to go the way I want, and I'm not good. So I'm not going to get what I want. Combined with it's not going to go the way I want. And I'm going to be judged for messing it up. So there's powerlessness on one. So it still goes down to powerlessness. Right. There's this responsibility and accountability that I that I avoid. That I have historically tried to avoid mm -hmm. because Why? because then if it there's like this. Uh, Remember when we were talking about like there's this baseline and then you know, like this is the baseline of of let me start over. There's like there's no it can it can be bad or it can be neutral. It can't be it can't end in a positive way. Is how I is how I've felt about this. I dove into this this morning. It's like there's wait the the outcome of something can be right. only. Bad there, you know, or neutral. Okay, there's there's a you know in in this example, there's two outcomes to this. Either sorry, you're not getting a new thing, or sorry for your inconvenience. Here's your new thing, right? Sorry for your inconvenience. Here's your new thing. It just brings us back to where we wanted to be, right? Mm -hmm. I guess realistically, maybe we have two of them, one for free, maybe whatever, but. Do you in, want to look at that as positive? Yeah. But oh, too bad we're not gonna we're not gonna make this right is a negative. So there's no positive outcome to this to me. It's only negative or neutral. So there's no real upside to this. So it feels like it's really weighted in the way that it can go bad and not good. I'm not saying this is accurate. I'm saying this is how I've always perceived it. And uh which doesn't really make sense, why, especially now that why, I think about why it. Why perceive it that way? I don't know. Because it's like, the outcome I want is just back to fair. I'm not trying to, to get free stuff. I'll ship back the old one. I don't want it. It's not about getting free stuff. It's not about cheating the system. It's about getting back to fair. And fair is the baseline. So if, if I can't get back to the baseline, then it's going to be well, well below the baseline in a bad way. Not like above in in a good way. Does that make sense? That's how I've looked at this type of stuff. Whenever I have to call up and you know argue with a credit card company, yeah. Or but th but then what? Whatever what, what it happens it, to be. Let's say this. That's your definition. Then what? Right. What, what, so, so then what? So my so I've I've always been anxious in those situations because I'm like, there's no good that can come out of this. There's bad or neutral. And if it's neutral, okay, great. Sarcastically, great. We're back to where we needed to be in the first place. But if it's bad, a, you know, maybe we lost some money or we didn't get what we wanted. And B, it's my fault. I will internalize that 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 fault. And now it's my fault. And now everybody's going to know it's my fault that that whatever it is. And then you're not going to be loved? Yeah. Yeah. Because 
You know, who wants to love the guy that uh, that messed it up? Did I mess it up? No. But that's, you know, that's how I've always thought about it. Where did that come from? <laughs> right. I think it, you know, it's tied back to this, you know, need to, you know, I, I had love tied to this performance. So this is a bad performance. Oh, it's a, perf it's a performance. It's a, it's right. a show. It, yeah. And if I don't, or if I perform bad, then, you know, that's the opposite of love, basically. Right. Because if, oh, we can get, get deep in here. If, um, I just did, I didn't feel loved for who, you know, uh, unconditionally. Like, me as a as a human, as a soul, was not did not feel love. Feel I did, feel. I did not feel love. Do you feel? Hmm? Do you now feel? Do I now feel love? Yeah, I do. I think dot 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 <laughs> dot dot dot. I think if there's a dot dot dot, and I think yeah. there might be a question there. So, but it was like you know. I, I didn't, I mean, from a young, young, young age, I, did, I didn't. And so, but I could feel loved at least by proxy through attention if I did stuff or, or whatever. I could earn my love or manipulate my way into, into that feeling. I could feel it felt good when I got attention, which I, you know, would call it love. Now I realize those are not the same thing. Not even related. They're two separate topics. Um, it's like, you know, do you feel loved or do you feel caffeinated? It's like, well, those don't even, right, they're, they're yeah, do completely you think, separate but things. But do you think you have spent time joining, uh, disjoining those two? I've tried to spend time disjoining those two. Yeah. I have spent time disjoining those two, Do you yes. think it worked? Uh, I think there's probably still room room to grow in that. Um, and so, right, if, so the insidious part of this is if I grew up feeling like that, which I did, then I viewed myself as just inherently unlovable because I am not lovable. It's only my actions that are lovable. Yeah, but where does... Where does the idea that so if that if that processing is true and you have to do something in order to get attention, therefore in your in your case scenario equates to love, what then you're implying is if you do something and it goes well, because the scales are only bad and neutral. That love and that attention, therefore, is actually not a good thing. It's just a baseline that you of what well, you perceive as you deserve. I guess lately, it doesn't feel like I need to do things to get love. But no, I'm going back to your initial programming. Like if this, if this is the initial thought, right? Do you see what I'm trying to say? No. Well, you, well, let me let me say let me say this first. But it does still kind of feel like if I do something bad, I will lose love. Yeah, so but you're still in so that there's, there's neutral that. or bad. There's still a little bit of that. Yeah, but because this is what I'm trying to point out, right? If you're young, then this is where it's coming from. It's coming from not having a loving mother, right? Yeah. So you're young, and then your perception as a child is, I am unlovable, and I have to perform certain acts or do certain things or impress or get good grades or, you know, whatever in order to get attention and then therefore feel love or get love. Correct. Right. If it was me, right, if I, if I had to put myself in that situation, then how I would scale it would be there's no love and then there's love. And that would be the scale of duality. It's zero and one. There's no in between. Yes. I guess I... So, 
so that that is what I want to. Cl- I think you need to spend time clarifying why is the scale bad and neutral and not bad and good. It is bad and good, but the the situation of there's some situations that are bad and good. There's some situations that are bad to neutral, and there are probably some situations that are neutral to good. There's different situations. It's not everything is is bad to neutral. But in how about this? In you getting attention. Is that ever bad and good? No love and yes love, and then therefore that's good and bad. Or is it actually bad and neutral? No, it's there's bad and there's neutral and there's good. And what's good look like? Good would be like p- positive attention. What kind? What? How is it different than the attention you used to get from from your mother? No, it, I mean it could be positive attention or it could be negative attention. You know, it could be you know. Praise or, you know, like, you know, being yelled at or something. Okay. So, there could, you know, what's neutral? Neutral's probably like some, some baseline of, uh, I don't know, no or little attention or, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing good, nothing bad, just, just. I'm not being ignored, but uh, you know it's it's not it's not praise, right? It was it was the praise and the when I say attention, I don't. It isn't necessarily like I acknowledge that you're there. It was you know, good job, type of positive. You know that the praise, maybe attention is the wrong word. It was you know, praise or what's the opposite of praise? Condemnation. And then the middle is just, you know, a, a neutral, we're all, we're all here, but you know, it's not, we're all here. Good job. I love you. Where's love though? I, I would associate the praise with love. So there's no love in neutral and there's no love in, uh, in the bad. R- yeah. Neutral is not, no, I, yeah. Neutral would not be love. But it's better than negative. Which is what, like, instead of love, it's hate? Or just no love still? Uh, yeah, it's it's worse than no love. It's like... So, actively, in, in a negative is, this person actively does not love me, and she's showcasing it in this action. Right. Neutral is, she doesn't love me, but she's just not showcasing it. Yeah, it, it, there's, it, don't love, don't hate, it's just... Right. It, it, what what go, is neutral? Imagine it goes from negative one to zero to positive one. Yeah, I but look at where's it like love at zero? What? I don't know that there is, I don't know that I felt love at zero. Maybe, maybe just like, oh, well, I guess they're my parents. They probably love me. But I didn't, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I only felt something when it was up there with, with the praise. Praise and love were completely tied together for me. Take away the praise, the love has been taken away too. So just a, a, a neutral, hello, how was your morning? You know, just a, was not, there's no, there's no love to me in that. So like, basically, unless something is happening that is super special, baseline operation of a human, of a human everyday life is I'm not loved. Right. Which, which I also, which also meant, right? If, if I have, if it's these actions that bring me love, then me, myself, must be unlovable, or at the very least unloved, but probably so, unlovable. Which basically means me being myself in everyday world means I'm not lovable. That's how I. That's how I took it. Yeah. Yeah, so just everyday behaviors. Right. Like taking that's mess- a crap that's messed up. or like drinking water. I'm in this state unlovable. Right. Because this- that's nothing special. Because there's nothing special. Because only the specialness was right. I I mean, from a young age, I fused those neural pathways together of praise and love. That is the same thing. It was, I mean, but, but was, pra- it, was that a conscious, did, praise, I, did I think that? Praise means like, oh, the, uh, this is next level special. The, I have to be special. Yeah, not only that, but it's it's almost uh, 
unsustainable because, you know, okay, well, you know, you, you can only get 100%. That's it. But yeah, but after you get 100% you only, on everything for 12 years of your high school, there's nothing else. So that becomes right. the it, normal. It becomes, you know, the, the bar keeps getting raised. And so it, it, is, it is an unsustainable thing. Yeah. I, an, I know that. I've, I, I've always known that. I've always I mean, known that like, it's almost like it's insatiable. You've always, always got to out, you've got to outdo yourself. You've got to push out before you got to push yourself. Yeah. I mean, like, but that insatiable drive is just right. I mean, that's where probably most, you know, elite level athletes, business owners, you know, probably, you know, where that drive comes from. Lack of love. Yeah, because you know, well, if I if I make a million dollars, oh, well, okay, I made a million dollars, I don't feel any different. If I make ten million, then no, oh well, okay. Well, if I get a private jet, oh well, that doesn't change anything. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you untangle that in your mind at the age of forty? Well, I've thought about how you know. Pick a pick just any person. Is this person, you know, just you know, some stranger? Is this is this person? Does this person deserve love? Is this person loved and lovable just for being just for the very nature that they are a human being? Yes. But you okay. know, you realize that's like just spending I know, time logic and things. It is, but I but I but I feel that. And but but yes, it's both. And it's like, what about someone that I don't like? Oh, you know, Bob over there. I don't like him. But I don't like him. But is he lovable? Is he does does the fact that he is a human being mean that he is a lovable entity? Yes. Right. A, a, a dog, an ant, a tree. You know, all of these things, by the very nature that they exist, makes them worthy of being loved. Wait, worthy, why would I be worthy of being loved? Worthy, right? There's, yeah, worthy. Like a rock is literally worthy of being loved and and deserves love and is love. I mean, deserve and worthy. Those are those are tying words into justifications. Okay, we'll come back to that. Am I less than a rock? No. Therefore, I am also. So that, that it, worked for you? It, it did work for me. It really did. Because I felt it. I'm like, I, do I think that I'm less than a rock? Do I think I'm less than, than a bug? No, I don't. You do, but you do, do realize I think that you're I'm less still than scaling all these people? it. I know I'm scaling it, but this did work for me. You know? <laughs> They're like, don't take it away from you. <laughs> don't, right. don't show you what's wrong with it. <laughs> no, we, we can go there. But, but let me finish. You know, I'll, you, know, I, you know, here's some person that I, I really don't like. And, you know, am I really less lovable than this person? No, everybody's at this 100% lovable level. Why would I not be? It, I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And I can feel that, no, all humans and all creatures and all things, that is the, that is the baseline. There is, no, there is nothing other than 100% lovable. And, and deserving of love and loved that is that is that is where everything in the universe rests and the idea that me and me alone because that's how it felt it felt like me and me alone is not and when i when i extrapolate that out going really i'm the one i think about how special i must be if i'm the one person who is not deserving of that Right? Really? I, 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 Eight billion people on the planet, and I'm the only one? Because that's how it felt. It felt like I am the only one. You can take any, any you know, serial killer monster out there, and their actions are, are terrible. Yes. But the, the soul is, you know, lovable. Am I worse than that? Through... And I can't even say it's through any sort of action. It's not through anything that I've done. It was just this innate feeling that I had because I just didn't feel it growing up. 
No. So that worked for me. That said, there is still this like, oh, if, if you know, the Amazon robot doesn't give me what I want, I'm going to, you know. But you can separate, right? It can sit there on its own. The Amazon robot not getting you your, you know, your money back does not have to go there. Right. It shouldn't go there. It should be complete. That is a, that, that is completely orthogonal to the idea of being loved. And even, you know. But the, do you notice the charge difference when you separate the pain body out of Amazon robot interactions away from like, oh, here, here's where it's actually hitting. And those two are completely separate yeah. issues. So, so there, there's the, I'm not going to be loved if it goes that way. And then there's the, I'm going to be judged if it goes, goes that way. Right. If I can't. Do you think I judge you? Uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Me. So, and you realize where my judging comes in, right? My judging is not judging. My judging is you not doing something right hits my unsafety trigger. So it's not judging is that, look, <laughs> here I am, unsafe again. You're, you're poking me with judgment and I'm poking you with unsafety. Yeah, but it's not, <laughs> it's not judgment. Yeah. It's I, that you right. have opened up my wound into unsafety. Right. And I'm, I'm over here trying not to open my wound into judgment. And yep. in doing so, probably opens up your wound even more, which in turn opens up mine. Because avoiding it, I, then I'll just be judged for that. Avoiding what? Avoiding, you know, the uh, arguing with the Amazon robot, for example. Oh, right? okay. I can, I can avoid it, in which case I'm judged, or I can do it, in which case I will either be judged or baseline. So is that, is which, that, which is, is that what this week's uh, household improvements entailed? Like, was that tied into that? The outlets? Well, just anything. Like, all the things you did is because if you did not do them, you were going to be judged for not doing them? No, this this is a no. This is a different thing. Are you sure? Because yeah. it feels like it would be related. No, I can because like, that's I, performance. I can tell that is performance oriented. Yeah, I, no, I can tell when I do something for that reason. Um, so the, even uh, though that thing was spiked this week, the other things were not tied in into that pain body. The the outlets. No, no, just about? just anything like all the all the household things. Like all the household chores, all the things that went wrong at my parents' house and our house, like all the things you had to do. No, no. There's a different. There's a different thing which may, this is whole pain may body. very this well is be its own pain body. But I don't know. Like I get personal satisfaction out of taking something that doesn't work and fixing okay. it. Okay, no, that's fine. I, and if I was on an island alone with all of humanity deceased. And there was broken stuff. I would still be fixing the broken stuff just because. Tinkering. I, I enjoy tinkering, tinkering and I enjoy taking something and making it better. And so yeah. no, take, but taking I, a bad outlet and putting a new outlet in. Uh, I, I mean, do, do I get praise or attention out of that? Maybe. I don't know. But that's not the reason I do it. I do that because I don't like ba broken outlets. They irritate me in almost an OCD type of a way. There's his own thing. But, uh, no, I, but I, I, get, I get satisfaction out of that being fixed. Almost yeah. like, not that this is the healthiest way to look at it, but I almost like, okay, well, here's, my, here's all the stuff that's, that needs to be fixed. All the way from, you know, the dog fence isn't working, the, the, uh, blinds need to be hung up in the garage. Oh, yeah, there's, there's there's a lot, right? And some of those are you know five minute jobs, and some of those are you know longer jobs. But that that weighs on me not because of being judged, but because I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't the way I want it to be. I want it to be fixed or better. And sometimes there's like you know, well, if we don't fix the dog fence, the dog could escape. There's like actual real life consequences other than 
Christmas lights don't happen to be on. Yeah. With me, I noticed this week the the feeling of helplessness and feeling trapped and things not going my way. And this has always happened. And so I noticed it. Then kicks in the control of like, well, how can I get things to go my way? And how can I get myself feeling that feeling of being pleased? Maybe like not neutral, but good. And to me, like organizing things and cleaning things it, it and does. fixing it helps. things. It pacifies that. Is a, is is a is feeding that hole. I it it is some it I mean I'm sure there is a control aspect to to that. Yeah. There's there's a lot of people that I know who were raised in such way that when they feel out of control or and then there's another aspect of of being called dirty. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. You. From but yeah, but I I'm not I know I'm not the only one. There's a lot and like a, a lot of those people vibrate on a very specific frequency. And so I can feel I can feel them. I can feel their pain body because it resonates with me. <laughs> Your brothers and sisters. Ah. <laughs> uh, not by choice. <laughs> right. No, none of us chose this, right? Right. Uh, but there's this that that lack of control. And when enough things go wrong, or perceptually, right? They're not actually going wrong, but perceptually go wrong. The only way that a lot of people address this whole is it, no, it makes it makes people feel dirty or unwanted or unclean. And then the, the OCD. And the control and the cleanliness comes out as a compensation technique for not feeling the right way. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever thought about the OCD. Like, not, you and I throw the term OCD a it's lot, not, and both of us not, are not yeah, diagnosed not with it. OCD. Yeah, but but it is a very much an OCD type of a behavior where yeah. if sooner enough, if enough things feel out of control, like meaning like. I feel trapped. I feel stuck. I feel like I cannot get things to go my way. Yeah. Then you have to compensate for that feeling by then doing yeah. tasks. Ah, uh, everything's rudimentary. going wrong. Time to clean the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Right. So most of most of my cleaning and organizing and do, making things nice uh -huh. come from. I, yes. I mean, I I I guess I've noticed that. Even early on, in with our, me, in our, yeah, yeah, you know, eventually there would be like an an angry cleaning day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, still but, or, or less so. I don't remember the last one. I mean, I'm, I'm, I imagine most people are the same way. I mean, but everybody has their bar of of how dirty dirty something has to be well, before the, the it bar, triggers you. The, but the trigger could the, be the bar is not actually the trigger of the dirtiness. The bar is. This, that feeling out of control that that they needs to be reset. I, like, oh, I have reached my bar where enough things have went out of my un, perception. Unrelated to the status of unrelated, the kitchen. Yeah, no, it has okay. nothing to do with the kitchen, right? Well, like, if, you know, like, let's say this week, right? Like, five or six different things happened and then we are kind of like that vigilant and not yeah. much thing, you and, know. And, 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 what, and what did you do right before we had kick out? Oh no! It, um, or is that not it? No, I feel like before I make cacao, because to me it's a sacred ritual. Okay, the, the kitchen needs to be clean. Okay, that's different then. Yeah, because okay. if I'm if I'm ritually making something, everything needs to be pristine in order for I think the my, my energy to feel okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Clean. That makes sense. Yeah, so that's the same reason I say it's not because I feel. Right, it's 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 that cleansing of a ritual of a ritual. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I have have that then, but there is a there is a bar, and it's higher than yours. But when my desk gets dirty enough up to this bar, I'm like, oh, this is awful. <laughs> How could it have been such a disaster? And I and I will clean it off to somewhere less than the bar. Is it empty? No, but it's less than the bar. And your bar for a clean desk is is like the laptop and a lamp. And mine has a lot of wires. Yeah. And I look at your desk and I'm like, oh, that looks great. 
And then I look at mine, I'm like, but I need that wire. And I need, and you know, all these papers, I need, that's all the stuff I need to do. And I can justify everything that's on my desk. Or I could find a I mean, proper my, place my, for it. My desk is not that clean. Your desk is... I just don't could, like wires. I could take a picture of your desk right now and it would be pretty. And I could take a picture of my desk right now and it would be... Let's not put up these pictures. No. <laughs> nobody needs to see that. No. I... And then I just don't just like wires. I just don't like wires. I don't like wires. I, I imagine some sort of, you know, magic future, magic Tesla future where there are no XLR cables and there are no, you know wires on the desk and everything just stays charged and everything magically works. That would be fantastic. Unfortunately, a laptop needs power and then it needs a wire to the monitor and then it needs another wire for the network because I need one the fast network, not the wireless network. And then, it, you know, I've got the, the keyboard and the pads and they all have the wires, 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 wires. No, I, the, and papers, papers, papers. The the concept which is harder to justify. The concept of But no, I do I do understand that what you what you said. The OCD? Because there was uh it wasn't with cleaning, but when I was a teenager, there would be times when I would just be now I know now I recognize it as just being at my wits end about I don't even know what. The home situation, probably. And I would clean my room and or rearrange my room because, oh, what can I, you know, what can I do as a, as a 16 year old kid? I have no control. control. I have no power, but darn it. I'm going to move my bed from this corner to that corner. Look at me. I'm in, I am the master of my domain now. Right. Yeah. I organized when I was younger a yeah. lot. I would, I would do that when I was, you know, frustrated to some degree. Yeah. No, yeah. so I think cleaning it was an outlet, organization. It was an outlet for, for trapped that. energy and processed better, energy. Better than heroin. Yeah. But still, it is, you know. But I think, you know what, the reason why I want to bring this up is because I think this is something that is not acknowledged or discussed. Like, you know, you can say, oh, well, you know, there's alcoholism and there's heroin and there is like even like, you know, running as an addiction and all these other things, right? right? But cleaning the house and organizing things and and is not discussed as an outlet. Right. And most of the people who go through it It's a socially acceptable one. Well, well I I don't even think if it's recognizable by most people of why we I say we, you know, people like me or you go into that out of control mode and the need to organize and the need to clean because inherently how it makes us feel if we don't like what are we feeling whenever we're compensating with cleaning and organizing hits really really deep it, yeah. it hits really really deep like in fact i think it hits at the core of the childhood trauma yeah something that that is probably the hardest to address right it's the lack, it's of, mother, lack of mother or grandmother or or father early childhood related yeah event yeah i mean it's some weird combination of control i don't think i have the, this dirtiness thing i don't think i was ever called called dirty or anything but i know i know you, you have that but at the same time it's like well, obviously, cleaner is better, and better is more likely to get praise and or love. Yeah. So, yeah. My grandma had this. I did. I, I maybe maybe I told you this, but now it's coming up, and I'm like, oh no, she really had this. So my grandma raised me. I say raised me, but my mom and dad were there. But my, you know, in Ukraine, uh, the grandparents kind of raised the grandchildren, and in her, by force, she was forced to, and like. So I think there was some resentment there. Yeah. But she had her own personal issue with cleanliness. Like, so however she was raised as a child, being clean and having things clean compensated for her being unwanted, unclean, dirty. And so obviously generationally, if you don't work on your own pain body trauma. Kick it down. She just kicked it down. And because it's a grandmother raising me as a grandchild, she just kicked it down. 
And I remember every night that I would stay with her, there was a routine where you had to wash your feet. And, and now that I think about it, it's completely fucked up. It was, so one, the kitchen had rugs and the kitchen was separate from the house. And so it had rugs, but then the rugs were always covered with newspapers. So we, the kitchen, we walked on newspapers, right? So you, you track, stick to your feet, you track them around and everything? Or are they taped down? No, they're not taped down. They're just laying there. No, they wouldn't stick to your feet. Okay. I don't know, maybe Soviet newspapers are different. <laughs> um, and so I'm like throughout the day, they would get dirty and some days dirtier than others. And so there was a routine where one, you would boil water because we have no running water. Well, we have running water, but anyway, you would boil water and you would put it in this pan and the pan, and then, and then the water is really hot, but we needed to go inside. And so half of the time, I would have to be putting my feet in super, super hot water. And I realize now, I think I have some sort of fucked up trauma associated with my feet. Like almost scaldingly hot water? Uh, almost scaldingly hot water, right? And you would get used to it after a while. Yeah. And she would tell me, oh, you would get used to it. It's fine. Just put it in. But you do, right? Like yeah. when you turn the it's shower like, it's on. It's like a hot, a hot bath. But, but, you know, there is some temperature above which you can... Do damage. Yeah, but too big. Well, there was never damage, but the psychological thought process of being forced as a child to put your feet in a cold and hot water. It certainly hurts. Hurt. And then, I mean, technically, yes, I could say no and whatever, I'll wait and I would wait. So I was never like, she took my feet and put him in there. But that psychological pressure. That doesn't sound great. I think somehow fucked me over. So there's something that I haven't hit there and then two the feet had to be cleaned and she would almost always point out how dirty my feet were and i'm like heck and i mean now logically i'm processing it we live where like it is in the country and i run in the yard all the time like literally in the in the it's i guess you would refer to it as a kitchen garden but it's like a full garden right dirt ukrainian dirt so it's really dark you know that rich soil and I'm climbing trees and I'm just a kid. Right. But the fact that she had to say that my feet were dirty and she would force me to clean my feet and this fucked up. What, I mean, I'm, I love my grandma. So I say this, none of this is personal. But this is now that I think about it. It's like this trauma inducing you're dirty. Your feet have to be clean. Look at what you're doing to the newspaper. You're getting the newspaper dirty, which is like a thing. I'm like, fuck, the, the reason why the newspaper is there is to protect the rugs. So, to protect the rugs. Which, so, is the, which is there to protect the... Was there a floor? Or was it... The, the floor was very bare, so the, the rugs were there. Oh, yeah. T uh, t oh, yeah. Tell the audience about the, uh, the yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and then... <coughs> um, I guess on the other end, I am... I'm a, I'm a mixed nationality of a Jew and a Ukrainian, right? And so skin tone wise, I don't think I'm not white, but apparently that is a discussion now in the world, whether or not Jewish people are considered white. But I think that hits really deep with me is because I look completely different than most Ukrainians. In my high school, no, wait, no, this is not high school. This is elementary school. There were kids who the Soviet Union, who are responsible to make sure that all the younger classmen would would wash their hands before lunch. Yeah. And so I would go in into, into the cafeteria and I would wash my hands. And because of the way my skin tone is, maybe, like, I don't even know what color I am, so I'm still questioning you're, my whiteness now. slightly... You you look like you're just consistently more tan, a, a tan person. Yeah, more tan but than I, ta me. I also tan very you tan, easily. You tan, yeah, yeah, like I think genetically, I just tan very easily. Yeah. But so come, I would go to school, I would wash my hands, and then you literally had to present your hands to these elder inspectors, inspectors who were older classmen basically, and then they would have to decide whether or not I washed them. And um, some days, depending on you know whoever was monitoring, I would be sent back three or four times to rewash my hands. You know, the, the lines in your hand, I mean, everybody's lines in their hands are darker than the skin around them. 
Are but your lines just a lot mine, lighter? Well, mine are red, but yeah, but like right with them, they would decide uh, but, that that's dirt. Yeah. However, my lines are right. I, I know. So I guess maybe I'm not as white as most people think I am. Uh, but I have, there you go. But I have, we have had, in the United States, we have, I've had a lot of prejudice t- type of behavior you've been, towards you, you me. You've been racially profiled. Yeah, racially profiled. It's, and I'm confused about to what race, which, you know, yeah. I have never not thought of myself as white. I, but, but apparently neither, but... I'm not white enough by the racism of the country. Um, yeah, and so that that hit that same thing, being dirty, right? And it went on to the point where I would not even have time to eat lunch by the time I would, because, you know, I wash my hands, I go to them, I present it to them, I have to stand in this little line to present it. They would send me back. I would have to stand in line to wash my hands and I would go back. And then, so by the time I would get out, there was no lunch. That's not fair, is it? Right? No, but I think there's a lot of this trapped body right. of just being the dirty child. Um, and then the grandma telling me my feet are dirty. I think there's right. a lot of trapped that's body the, there, too. If anything, too. that's worse because it's, it's, a, personal, loved it's a personal loved one yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yo, she also told me my legs are crooked. <laughs> your, leg, your legs are great. <laughs> no, but dad registered, too. And she said, oh, nobody will marry you. Your legs are crooked. And I'm like, I think that really damaged me at some point of like, I have crooked legs. No, I'm completely dissociated from my body, but now it makes me wonder why. Maybe because there's all this body shame that was embedded into me growing up, right? They're like, oh, your legs are crooked. Nobody will marry you. Look how dirty you are. You're not even white. You know, and I'm like, what What am I now? A dirty, what? Dirty, miscolored thing? Because I'm not black and I'm not white. Where? What? What color am I? You don't have an identity anymore. No, but but that's that was another thing that I was thinking about is like there's this push to dis dis to to have um, an identity to associate with to find a group and become part of that group. Well, no, that that is the pain body thought process. But now my 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 internal like spiritual self recognizes. That there is no scale, like right, like I'm now starting to recognize the reason why there's all these questions about who's white and who's black and who's a Jew or who's clean and who's dirty are coming up is because humanity as a whole we're basically trying to descale our minds. Does that make sense? No, keep going um. Everything has been categorized and placed in boxes and definitions. And right now, basically, the greater, the greater directive into our spiritual awakening is we are going to get rid of these definitions. Get rid of these boxes. Okay. These and boxes s- are going away. Okay. And so people are like, ah, I love my boxes. <laughs> we need to find some more boxes to put people in. But the boxes are basically disintegrating, right? right? So all of a sudden, Right. Like I, I, you know, you, you kind of like hit me up with these like little tidbits of like Yale and University of Pennsylvania stuff and whatever Elon yeah. said about the Jews and the whiteness of the comment that he commented on. And it hit hot, hard and like personal. Right. I'm trying not to get emotional about it. Um, but it's because the boxes are starting to. To dissipate. You have to pick up the talking right now so oh. I don't cry. So. <laughs> Do you, as, uh, so there are fewer boxes and people are scrambling to make new boxes to put things into in order to compensate for that? No, no, the boxes that are there are starting to get dissolved, but the rhetoric has us hold on to them. So the reason why everyone's fighting about who is a Jew and who's white and who's black and who belongs here and who doesn't belong here and who this land belongs reason, to and who that, that land belongs a, to. The reason that it's even a topic in the news. Is because they're dissolving. But the system does not know, human beings do not know how to self-identify without definitions. Yeah. No, we need, we, I mean, and maybe this is some sort of, you know, prehistoric survival mechanism, you know, evolutionarily, maybe. 
Um, but I, you know, there is this like, oh, I need to find a tribe and I need to be part of that tribe. And I need to do anything I can socially to be part of this tribe. Because if I don't, then I'm going to die alone. I'm going to, you know, the saber tooth tigers are going to eat me. But there's safety in this tribe. And this tribe is, you know, we're, we're all we're all the same in whatever aspect. We're all the same color. We're all the same religion. We're all like the same sports team. We all are the same political group. We're all the same state or the same country or the same whatever. But but uh, implicit in we're all the same, you know, group is dot 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 but they're not they're a different color or they're a different nationality from a different yeah. country. They're the Republicans, we're the Democrats, or they're yeah, the, no, I think they're it was the survival Chinese based. and we're the American, whatever it is. If if there is an us, then there's almost definitionally a them. And, you know, maybe we like them, maybe we don't. Maybe we like them today, but maybe we don't trust them because, oh, they're shifty. I don't know, right? Yeah. So there has always been this well, if we can get together and all agree that we're the same, whatever, the same skin color, the same religion, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're all, they're all ridiculous. Then we feel safe because we're, we're, we feel safe in numbers. We have all, oh, look, we're all, we're all together. We're all safe. And we can protect ourselves from them, whoever, whoever the, the them happens to be. The Soviets, oh, watch out for the Soviets. They're going to come get you. Yeah, I mean, there was- They I got the bomb. There was a lot of political rhetoric that forced that separation, right? Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I think as a whole earth, we're completely just joined by this definition. Right. I mean, I, I've said this before, but imagine imagine if we, if we found, you know, oh, turns out there's a bunch of Martians living on Mars, right? Oh, there they are. We, we've missed them. There's, you know- Five billion Martians living on Mars. Would it be weird if there's like, well, these are the North Martians and these are the South Martians. They don't really get along. That, that doesn't even make sense. When you think of, of an alien race on a planet, well, I, it's almost incomprehensible to me that they would be fighting amongst themselves. Obviously, they are all, well, we're just all Martians. We're, we're all living in not necessarily peace and harmony, but it's not like the green Martians hate the blue Martians. I don't, I don't see it like that. And I imagine if, we, if they came to Earth, they'd be like, what is wrong with you people? You don't like you because you live on the other side of this imaginary line? What? Yeah, but I think there's, I think there's that standpoint of, remember they said, uh, somebody said this. Um, Because we have draw, drawn these lines, right? Or we have drawn these lines because we're one planet Earth-centered system, right? And so somebody, I think you and I had this argument is um, once we become multi-planetary, Right. Yeah. Then it'll divide at that level. Right. It'll That's be Earth thing. versus. We like, will always be dividing. What was it the Expanse? That TV show, The Expanse. There was the, there was Earth, which yeah. seemed to mostly get along with Earth, and there was Mars, which seemed to be its own thing. But Earth was super suspicious of Mars, and Mars was super suspicious of Earth, and they yeah. didn't really like each other. And then yeah. there were the people in in the asteroid belt, and there's these three groups that all kind of don't trust and maybe even hate each other. But if we live in that pain body trapped sense of duality. We will always be separating Mars versus the belt versus Earth, or in this case, China versus United States versus Soviet R Russia. R you know what I mean? It, th that rhetoric would always be there. But then we take the against and we, we, we take our uniqueness, such as our skin color or, I don't know, our, the color of our hair, color Legend. of our eyes, or nationality or race, right? And we identify that as some sort of definitionary Right, that's who subset. I am. I am a right. white person. I am a, a Christian. I am a this or that. Right. And that becomes, it does, it becomes like a definition. Well, definition, right? And I was thinking, okay. An identity. Uh, definition and identity. Well, I mean, I think most people who are young, who are not falling victim 
to their personal pain body and they're able to like think for themselves and then possibly push back and go, wait, this is not right. Um, I think they might start to change the future. Yeah. I, I, I do think there's hope there. In the meantime, though, the systems will start to break down and then the young people there can be, can be cognitive enough and aware enough to where they can build a new system. That's my hope, is yeah. that enough young people won't fall into just accepting that the group X is, is bad and it's their fault and will go, wait a minute, A, no, it's not. We're all just humans. And B, if I feel the need to blame somebody else, where is that coming from? Yeah, let's look inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need to do this week. It's been hard. It's been hard, <laughs> it's been hard to dig. We've been digging and digging, but it's been hard. So until next episode. To looking inside. To digging. 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 <laughs> Have a good one. See ya.